Kedves Rita, kedves résztvevők, én is sok szeretettel köszönöm. Dear Rita, dear participants, uh, let me wish you a happy birthday uh, and congratulate you and everyone who helped organize this event. And it's a particularly great uh, joy for me to see all three uh, relevant uh, diseases being uh, picked up uh, um, professionals, uh, guests, people affected uh, by uh, these three um, institutions, are, by these three diseases are here. Uh, and it's, I must say, it's very rare for an event to cover all three uh, diseases, um, um, not just one of the three. Uh, CMT, uh, uh, DMD, etc. Uh, first, we will have um, um, a section on um, um, diagnostics, and then we will have a look around um, and see the experience we have seen uh, by Mr. Professor uh, Ochadi, uh, and then we will uh, have a lecture, a presentation by um, a foreign guest. A few words about myself. I started uh, working in this field at the University of Debrecen 35 years ago, uh, and uh, um, my scientific activity has been focused very much on these uh, diseases, um, and I actually wrote my dissertation on these uh, diseases, and I had the privilege of having an overview of the past 35 years uh, of this uh, journey. 35 years ago, we could only dream about having diagnostics and uh, any treatment or care uh, available. So what I would like to offer you is uh, an overview. Uh, I'm afraid I need some technical help because the, this button doesn't seem to work. Right, fine. A bit back. Okay, let's start with an overview. Um, because a number of people with different uh, conditions are here, it might be a bit boring, but because this is what we are going to speak about all day long, it might, might be worth um, looking at this um, from an anatomic uh, point of view. So um, you have... Um, the s central um, uh, nervous system, uh, which is then con connected to uh, the extremities um, by uh, motor um, um, nerves. Uh, we're not going to talk about all um, diseases, not about uh, diseases related to the central motor um, roots, but just um, the um, uh, dystrophies. Now, most of the time we speak about uh, inherited uh, diseases, and most of you who are here today with your families, uh, those affected are, have inherited this. And very often uh, we do not know uh, what triggers uh, the disease. However, there are forms of the disease uh, that were triggered by inflammation, by a tumor, autoimmune diseases. Uh, but today we are not focusing on this one, on the hereditary uh, version of uh, the disease. Uh, focusing on the Charcot-Marie tooth, uh, the addition um, uh, muscle dystrophy, uh, and uh, the rest. Uh, okay, now spinal cord. Uh, this is where we start from. This is your square one. Uh, your, you can see how complex uh, this um, root is because you have uh, uh, the the root. Um, where information travels uh, back, uh, and then these form a plexus, and then this is where your peripheral nerves will um, uh, step out, reaching out to the actual muscles. Uh, we are quite lucky to have a good genetic understanding uh, of the background, what's behind losing um, um, losing muscles. Uh, it's a faulty gene that uh, causes the disease. 
uh, and it's rather uh, tends to be um, uh, a missing part on the seventh axon. Uh, and depending on how many copies you have of this part uh, will determine how severe the disease will be. Um, um, formerly, um, we had no such diagnostic um, tools at our disposal, um, but n this is a, a tissue cross-section cross which we relied, used to rely on decades ago. It has a very typical um, um, pattern uh, and you could get a quite certain and, and um, precise diagnosis. Um, and yes, that said, um, those affected uh, had precise diagnoses, uh, even though um, um, even though there was no treatment and they didn't go to see a doctor because they thought there is nothing to be done. Now you can see that. Uh, Muscle wasting appears at different um, places. Well, um, types of SMA um, zero type zero is very rare because that's already that um, appears already in the womb. Um, uh, Type 2 appears between the ages of 6 and 18 months. Um, over 18 months is type 3. And um, it's very rare, but type 4 is when it appears in adults. Uh, we have uh, a total of uh, 58 uh, SMA um, patients uh, at the Institute. Uh, most of them are adults. And thanks to Biogen, we came up with a map where uh, our, um, the, uh, the affected people are located, how many uh, people are um, located in which county. Now, that covers all age groups. As you can see, the colors, uh, um, the red ones are where less people are affected, and the yellowish parts are where you have more affected. And uh, altogether, uh, 434 cases um, of diagnosis um, has been recorded so far, but that doesn't mean mm, that we have this many um, patients at the Institute. Now, if you break it down uh, to um, age groups, um, it's between uh, two, uh, between three and four uh, thousands uh, in Hungarian uh, population. Uh, SMA prevalence is not more than um, that. And here you can see the difference uh, in prevalence um, in different age, age groups. And then uh, it makes you think why in County Torna you have no uh, adults or children affected. But these are very graphic uh, illustrations where we need to uh, pay even more attention how to sensitize uh, society. And I don't just mean uh, professionals like pediatric pediatricians, uh, but also parents so that we can spot the disease as early as possible. And such surveys are extremely important because this is how you find out uh, what to do and where. Okay, we have left the spinal cord. Uh, now we have moved on to the peripheral nerves. Uh, uh, the peripheral um, uh, nerve is actually an axon. You, you can see there are two types of um, disease, peripheral um, diseases affecting the peripheral nerve. Uh, the axon uh, itself is covered in a in a it's a coating. Um, it's in a sheath, and this is what you call um, um, uh, a myelin. And if your axon is damaged, then that comes up in uh, in biopsies very clearly, um, um, very clear to see. So, and we have quite a lot of information on that. 
uh, you can see a very typical pattern. This is how it looks when uh, the, your axon and the sheath, the, the protective sheath, um, uh, is damaged. What types are there? Uh, you can see uh, you have a polyneuropathy when several um, uh, groups of nerves are effective, uh, mononeuropathy when it's just one place, or uh, multiplex because on one side you have just one group of. Um, uh, there are many types, but today we are talking about hereditary diseases only. And as you can see in the images, uh, you can see uh, what it looks like to have such um, muscle wasting. Uh, we see uh, these uh, abnormalities in uh, the, the extremities in um, distal parts, and as the disease progresses, uh, physical symptoms will move up to uh, the torso. Now, CM2 is a uh, CM2. Uh, Hereditary uh, motor sensory uh, neuropathy is uh, um, uh, an umbrella term for this. Um, about one in um, 2,500 people have this um, disease, CMT. Um, and you can see that um, type 2 is um, less, f um, less um, frequently occurring than type 1. Uh, and then you have hereditary motor neuropathy, uh, HMN, uh, where motor nerves are damaged. But there are other uh, rare forms. So it's an umbrella term um, called uh, HSMN, hereditary um, uh, diseases. Uh, type 1 is uh, the most frequently occurring one. You can see v very uh, characteristic appearances like uh, very thin um, um, lower extremities uh, like an, uh, and have the inverted uh, champagne bottle appearance, um, curled toes, hammer toes, uh, high arches uh, that are accompanied by contractures and uh, pain. Uh, it can be inherited uh, either on the uh, um, X chromosome or otherwise. Um, CMT1X um, means that it, that if it's inherited on the female line, then you have less um, less uh, symptoms. However, uh, f c females carrying um, uh, will not show any symptoms. Uh, CMT2, this, which is uh, a bit m more rare, um, again caused by a, a faulty gene, um, a mitochondrial gene, gene. And the next one is CMT0, is uh, the uh, less um, frequent. Um, and like Rita's daughter, there are extremely rare um, um, types as well. Uh, we published a study in 2018 um, giving an overview of, uh, uh, of those affected up until then. And um, you can see that the majority of those affected uh, are, have a genetically determined condition. And uh, out of uh, 148 uh, people were affected. Um, and uh, in 309 cases, we had uh, detailed clinical and electrophysiological information uh, available. Uh, so uh, CMT1 was more dominant uh, than uh, CMT2, as you can see in the chart. We looked at the genetic reasons uh, underlying the condition, and we found uh, that the majority, um, we, we could identify the genetic reasons um, 
in nearly 60 percent of uh, the cases. So there was a genetic reason behind. Um, I apologize. Um, the speaker has turned away from the microphone, and I can't really hear. Okay, turn back. So we also did an international comparison. Um, we used uh, studies and results uh, to compare. And if you look at international consortia, uh, we can see very similar figures uh, we had similar information on occurrence. And also interesting how often uh, in 40 percent of the cases and 39 percent internationally uh, where no diagnosis was uh, made, which means uh, that Hungarian diagnostic system was uh, at roughly as successful as uh, internationally. Uh, we have updated our figures um, and identified uh, around 100 uh, people more affected. And you can see that the picture did not really change fundamentally. PMT-22 uh, 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 has remained unchanged, um, but uh, Thanks to new generation gene se sequencing, uh, we can extend diagnostic procedures to new ones, and we are able to identify and detect more rare types as well. Now, muscle, muscles are a highly complex uh, structure, and uh, the prima donna, the, the main role is played by You have the dystrophin, where you have the sarcoglycans um, attached. So this is what you can see within the muscle with a complex attaching dystrophin to a connective tissue outside. Um, let, let's uh, skip the figures and numbers. They indicate the various diseases uh, that um, can be triggered by um, problems with the proteins in the muscle uh, itself. Now, the types of um, um, dystrophy, uh, muscle dystrophies, you can see uh, Duchenne type um, dystrophy where it will appear first. Uh, this is so, so typical that, so, that if you undress and lift your two arms, you can see, actually, and it's very easy to diagnose. Uh, there are also uh, types where um, swallowing or blinking, uh, your eye movements are affected. Um, uh, we were able to identify um, diag make diagnoses based on uh, biopsies because it has a very typical pattern, as you can see in uh, uh, the slide. And now, let me move on to a study we have just completed. Uh, because we overviewed previous diagnoses of, of patients with uh, neurodystrophies, because the world is moving on, there are new technologies available. And uh, we uh, here you can see the list where such um, procedures and um, uh, trials were carried out. And you can see uh, that DMD and BMD diagnosis uh, totaled 523. And uh, we re-examined 94 uh, archived um, samples where we suspected um, that the diagnosis was incorrect and we were proved right in 55 uh, cases. Um, 11 samples were unavailable, and 43 uh, cases, uh, the diagnosis was confirmed. And that's important uh, because we wanted to make sure we have the correct diagnosis to be able to offer uh, correct treatment or uh, ma care management options uh, to, uh, to patients. Now, um, this may not be 
may not tell you much, uh, but you have different types of mutation, uh, deletion or duplication, etc. But let me not go into uh, this one. We can paired this uh, Hungarian, relevant Hungarian data with international figures, um, and we found uh, 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 nonsense mutations, which means um, that we have more patients diagnosed than internationally. Uh, in this table, you can see uh, how many diagnoses you have uh, per treatments. Uh, but because we, we lose uh, patients, uh, even though you, diag you have a diagnosis, say, 20 years ago, uh, they may not be with us anymore. Uh, but the, these treatments and new treatments, new therapies, um, uh, Professor Rachad is going to talk about, gives new hope. Uh, also at our institution, particularly regarding Duchenne, uh, Duchenne's disease. So I think we are getting ready um, to be able to offer uh, proper diagnostic um, um, to those who come to us uh, for help. And I would like to say thank you for our staff and professional co-workers who who contributed to uh, this event and to our work at the Institute. Let me ask if you have any questions, uh, any comments. Uh, we would like to make this a communicative forum. We're together like a big family. We're together. So please feel free to ask any questions. We have uh, microphones uh, roaming my well, the answer is um, you always have to uh, contact our institution. We, we have young uh, geneticists, and uh, it's a good idea to have yourself tested, even if one of your more distant uh, relatives uh, uh, has, has been affected. Um, and uh, very often, you also have to uh, check the spouses, husband or wife. Um, so it's a good idea to screen the whole family. It's it's a it's a it's a very good question. If there are no more questions to this presentation, then we move on to the next presentation. Zoltan Gross, uh, lead professor of Semmelweis uh, University, uh, he is also very experienced uh, and will speak about the possibility. Of uh, possibilities of diagnostics in this field. 